racist we refused NHS treatment. So Wes Streeting, uh, the Health Secretary, says that people who are racist to NHS staff can and should be refused care. Now, his comments were in response to an attack on two Filipino nurses. Their car was reportedly pelted with rocks as they drove to work last week during the riots in Sunderland. Do you agree with Wes Streeting or should every patient be treated the same? Uh, while you get your calls in, let's find out what our guests think. Reem, I'll start with you. Do you think that you could, if you're an NHS staff member, you should be able to refuse to treat someone if they're behaving in a racist manner? Yeah, I think it's a really difficult situation because ultimately what happened to those Portuguese staff were absolutely horrendous. Filipino. Sorry, for, for Filipino staff was horrendous. And actually for a lot of those particular individuals, it can be quite hurtful. And obviously being in a workplace, you don't want to be facing that kind of treatment. However, the National Health Service is a national monopoly you have no other choice and if we were looking at European counterparts in which you do get that choice and if you are refused service from one doctor you can go somewhere else in this country you can't do that and I think well, you could really... go private you could you go private you have to pay but this is not be point. racist no but this is the point right ultimately those particular individuals won't have that kind of choice and actually I think if we're going to be talking about the National Health Service as though it's a through the point of use universal healthcare system then it has to be that and that includes horrible people uh, and I suppose we're talking about racists specifically here because of the recent riots, but actually are we going to expand that out and say anyone that verbally abuses a member of staff or anyone I, I think that uses language that the member of staff didn't like doesn't get treated? Is it a slippery slope? Racism is about dehumanising someone based on their ethnicity. And what we're talking about there was they were being violently assaulted. I mean, mm. obviously it'd be ludicrous if those Filipino nurses were to treat the people throwing rocks at them. That would be deranged behaviour. Um, I, I, it's a very basic point, which is if you racially abuse someone who's trying to help you, why on earth would they treat you? Obviously, if someone is seriously injured, they need to be treated regardless. They should just be treated by other members of staff. If you're working in the National Health Service, if you're someone who's working in extremely stressful circumstances, trying to save people's lives, trying to provide people with care, the very least you deserve is not to be racially abused based on who you are. And the point you made there about I mean, I think, bless you, I do, big fan of you, but I think <laughs> shoehorning and privatising the NHS into this conversation is... is it's, well, a, it's, it's about choice. It's a move. Right? Well, I just on that, I mean, obviously what would happen in those circumstances, you could just go to another hospital and just not racially abuse someone. It's not a monopoly. And that's a, if you, because in most private companies, say very clearly, if you abuse our staff, mm. we will not serve you. Mm. And that is, it's nothing, it's nothing to do with a state. So if they went to a private healthcare setting and they racially abused a doctor, the same response would happen. I mean, the, the, so the fundamental it, difference there, though, Owen, is that for a private healthcare provider, you are not forced to give them money. Everyone, no matter who you are, whether you're racist or not, you are paying tax towards the National yeah, Health Service. You're paying for it It anyway. doesn't give you unlimited rights to treat people or to break the law. By the way, that's what we're talking about. Just be mm. clear. We're talking about actually people breaking the okay, law. But, but paying but in Owen, doesn't mean you can just break the law okay, and then be treated without any can, consequences. You can see where this then could become a slippery slope. Because I think most people would take a gut reaction the same as you. If you're going to abuse someone, don't expect them to then care for you. However, they've taken the Hippocratic Oath and I think actually doctors would find this a bit of a struggle well, themselves. But what I wanted to say was, if we're going to say that if you're a racist, you don't get treated, do we say that murderers don't get treated because they've committed heinous crimes? Criminals in general. What we're talking about is a situation be when the. Because that might be an argument. What we're talking about here is the safety and security of NHS staff being threatened. Obviously, I'm not saying if someone's severely injured and they're racist and they're screaming racist abuse, they need to be treated. I'm not saying that shouldn't happen. Obviously, by different staff. I mean, the point we're talking about here is. If there are staff who are members of a minority who are being racially abused, mm. should those particular staff be forced to treat p patients, I by the way, who actually may abuse... threaten, may threaten their mm. very safety themselves? Well, we, we have to define that. what racial abuse actually looks like, right? I think if we're talking about language versus what's happened in the UK, which is actually that physical abuse, that kind of throwing rocks... Well, they, they are fine. Car. It was rocks at a car, so they are actually physically fine, but obviously yeah, I mean, found come it a on. very traumatising experience. Look, I mean, they, look, they, they deserve to be prosecuted and ultimately locked up for what they did to those nurses. But ultimately, if they are sick and they are ill and they've paid into the National Health Service, they should should be treated. We can't just let people right. off the streets. There, there are many, many horrible people in this and country. That doesn't mean they shouldn't but be that, not treated. But what we're talking about here is we're literally talking about staff who are minority staff from minority communities being racially abused. Should they be coerced 
into treating people. There are other staff who are available, but you're, they should be told, oh, if you're not seriously injured, you should be very clearly told if you're going to behave in a threatening where, way. Where does that end? of what West Streeting has said is interesting because I interpreted it differently. I heard, if you are racist in any NHS establishment, you will be refused treatment mm. on the NHS. So no going to another hospital, no going to another doctor. I assumed what he but how, you wouldn't was be a zero that's not tolerance possible. approach. It's not possible to enforce that. You wouldn't, I mean, how would you do that? Well, you just say, no, sorry, you'll have to go private. Well, well no, but, well, you can, I mean, that's but you that, can go and private. And that would but be you could, absolutely but you could just go to. you could just drive to another hospital and just not behave in that way. I think you, you don't have to behave. You don't have to be a racist. No. Just don't be racist, basically. <laughs> just don't be racist in society. But I mean, that's, if that's you're racist, That's so easy you... to say. That's so easy to say to those particular people. Look, there are so many horrible people in this country. We can't then refuse healthcare to all I, of those I didn't, people. But no one's saying that. I think we're being... We're speaking across purposes. If you are directly racist to an individual who is mm -hmm. trying to help you, then obviously they should not be forced to treat you, partly because it's a threat to their safety and their security. But also... You've got to accept consequences in life. You can't behave how you want in a society. That's not how it works. If you decide to break the social contract, if you decide to break the law, which is what we're talking about here, you cannot expect to suffer no consequences. You well, have a responsibility. I think, I, think if you break, I think if you break the law, as in you are physically abusing somebody, you're destroying their property, i.e. throwing rocks at their like car, the then those particular people should be arrested. No, no, no. But we're talking about receiving health care and what kind of slippery slope are we going to enter into? I'm also of the Verbally view, by the way... Is, sorry. I'm also of the view, by the way, that verbal abuse, as in using language, should not be illegal. It should not be illegal to say racist things. But you don't things. think it should be... No. You, you don't believe in hate crimes? So no, if, I don't believe it. I don't so believe if, I, if I walked... Let's, let's just... I'm, I'll stay my own line as a gay man. So if... I, if if someone walked down the street shouting, um, I hate gays, I hate gays, let's kill all the gays, you'd be like, that's free speech. Yes. Absolutely you don't think right. anyone because, should be arrested for because, inciting like no, murder? It's, no, it's, you're, you're, talk, you're talking about these two different extremes, no, Owen. But ultimately, we're talking about the language. So, I, I believe absolutely so people, people have the freedom to use whichever okay. language that they wish to. So you think, just, just be very clear here, yep. you think a thousand people could march through Soho chanting, I hate gay people, I hate gay people, you're all going to hell, and there'll be no consequences. I mean, why, why am... No, I'm, I, I'm saying... This, but you are. No, I'm saying freedom from the law, but not freedom from consequences. Those particular individuals, if they were to effectively argue that they are going to hurt people... No, 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 no. That's an okay. entire different situation. But you, situation. Could, you could spend the I mean, whole day... Saying, you could spend the whole day marching around. what we're speaking about. No, I don't think we are. Well we're talking about... How, I mean, that's absolutely... Okay, free so free. You're, you're, talk... you're hanging about on the definition of... of uh, you know, freedom of expression. Uh, freedom of expression. Susan from Lancashire... What do you think? Do you think if you are racist in an NHS establishment, you can be refused care? Well, I work in the NHS and there are signs all over the hospital saying abuse shall not be tolerated, will not be tolerated. And what happens when someone is abusive or is racist? Well, we have security. And then if it gets out of control, the police are called. Which makes sense, but when somebody is very ill and needs treatment, are they refused treatment on the basis that they have been abusive or racist? Well, if they're very ill, I mean, you know, you would treat them. Um, my husband was a doctor in the NHS for 40 years from India, and I can't imagine him um, refusing anybody treatment. He'd just rise above but they shouldn't have to put up with any sort of abuse when people are trying to help you. And I think the hypocrites, if the risk... I've had it said to me twice recently. Never had it in 40 years, but right... Uh, for so, two people telling me they're racist, and yet they were quite prepared to come and sit and see a doctor from overseas, so I think they're hypocrites anyway. He's telling you that they are racist? Oh, yes, quite openly telling wow. me. People are getting bold in this. Racists are getting bold in this. Yeah. They're getting bold in this. Look, I mean, ra racism is horrendous, and I think that this caller's husband was incredible to be able to serve all of those different people. Ultimately, we're thinking about the question is, if, if this particular individual is a racist, should they be refused service from the entire National Health Service? No one's and saying that. Well, that's not, no, uh, that was my interpretation of it, Owen, but your interpretation of it was you could just go to another hospital. Well, uh, you, I, it's you've not got possible. an NHS number, so they would be able to track that number and say, I'm sorry, you, you've no been... one, No one's proposing that, and that would obviously be absurd. Obviously, okay. everyone, regardless, if you've committed a crime, murderers, you mentioned murderers, everyone's entitled to healthcare mm. and everyone needs to be treated. I believe in that. Otherwise, you basically imposing a death sentence on various people, yeah. which I don't support. Everyone needs to be treated. 
But if you are someone who walks into a hospital and you racially abuse people trying to look after you, you should not expect them to provide you with healthcare. And if you don't have a serious injury or ailment, you should be expected to be ejected from that hospital. I mean, this is basic common sense. And which sounds like how it's, it's sort of working at the moment, Susan. Thank you very much for your call. Tim from Merseyside, what's your thoughts? If you make a racist comment towards NHS staff, you should be refused to be treated by them individually or by the NHS in its entirety? Oh, right, it's actually moved on a bit uh, since I first called through this to here. I thought the debate was about should anyone who was uh, guilty of racist offences against NHS staff be refused NHS treatment altogether. Well, see, that's another be, way of interpreting it, yeah. Tim. And what's your thoughts I, on that? I would be completely against that. Okay. Because um, the, the NHS doesn't have the right to impose the death penalty or unnecessary suffering on someone. You know, the, the, the penalties are in the legal system, it, not in the NHS. It, and to be fair to us treating, that's all he's saying. He's just saying that, that NH, people who are racist to NHS staff in health settings can and should be able... Uh, sorry, can, can and should be turned away from care. Yeah. It doesn't mean like. But, but that, that's I think it. that's turned away from care for everyone, or is that turned away from care from those particular doctors? Which I, I agree with Owen. I think that for those particular doctors or nurses that have been racially abused, they don't have to physically tell those people that they cannot, that they, they, they can effectively refuse service. But if we're talking about the entire National Health Service as a whole, which I think most people would agree, would that would be absolutely no, ludicrous. I, I really don't think anyone would ever propose that. Okay. And I don't think he's proposing that. And that, obviously, I wouldn't support that. Everyone needs to be treated regardless of how terrible they are. I mean, well, that includes yeah, serial killers yes. in prison. I and mean. Tim, you would agree with that then? That, that a member of staff should be able to refuse treating an individual if they have been uh, I th racist I think an individual them. member of staff who has been abused by a particular patient should be able to refuse to treat that patient, okay. yes, uh, but not a blanket ban. All right, Tim, thank you very much for your call. I just wonder with the lack of staff we have in the NHS, whether actually one individual refusing to treat uh, a, a a patient means that that patient is not going to be seen. Yeah. Sarah from Surrey, what's your view on this? Um, well, can I say, for the first time in my life, I actually agree with Owen. Oh, oh great. Um, <laughs> great, Sarah. It's always That's a first time. I only come on the show waiting for the day when me and you agree, <laughs> so this is a great day for me. Um, I, I think we should not be using the word racist. Okay. Um, I think that was very poor terminology from West Streeting. I think it's very divisive. But why is it divisive? Um, I think because um, this is going on a separate subject, so I could get my point across on, on the NHS. I think it, the word should be abusive to anyone. Um, okay. As opposed well, to racism is a sort of abuse, isn't it? It's an abuse targeted yes, at a certain a person because of their race. Exactly, mm. but then there is also other forms of abuse of threatening behaviour. It, it doesn't. That should not be allowed. And I agree with Owen in the respect of, you know, unless you actually need life-saving treatment, then think about what you've said mm. or how you threaten someone go to another hospital and then learn from the behaviour that you had in the first one. Sarah, so I what you're actually totally saying... wrong that any form of abuse... So you would extend it further to what West Streeting's saying? Because West Streeting was talking about somebody being racially abusive. You would just extend that to abusive for any reason? Exactly. There's all forms of abuse. It doesn't have to be racist. No. But that's where I disagree with you, Sarah. We have to distinguish just between abuse, which is bad on its own terms, and racism. Racism is about treating people as innately inferior to you based on their ethnicity, on their race, the colour of their skin, which is responsible for some of the worst horrors that human humans are capable but it of inflicting be, against but it each other. Be sexist it's completely so different. I, I do think racism is abuse. any... Of course, I agree. And misogyny, yep. homophobia. I'm, yep. not, I'm not saying that. But racism itself, racism is about... Which, you know, throughout, throughout history and in our current context, is about a menacing someone to their very core. It's about them as a human being. I mean, being. I'm, I'm not sure that racism in itself is any worse than any other kind of abuse. I mean, I, I, I don't think if somebody calls me a some, something very terrible about my Moroccan heritage, that's any any worse than anything else they could say so about So you don't me. think... So, do, think do, that, do you think... I mean, if you look at the rise of, like... But, well, I mean, just... This, 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 why? The not, it's like the rise of us, we just go, well, actually, there is no difference there between people calling each other idiots and then people no, calling no, Jews anti-Semitic. That's, that's about the language, isn't it? It's not language. It is, but... 
but you, 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 you see language that reflects oh, attitudes. Just, it's okay. about treating people what as inferior. What about sexual abuse? Because we hear that quite a lot from NHS staff. They are being sexually abused by patients. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think most, so. I think most people would say like... it is absolutely ludicrous to say that any doctor that is being sexually abused by a patient then has to forcibly treat them. I think that's absurd. I don't think, I think anybody's saying that. I, I think just, it's also absurd. Right? I think it's also abuse. absurd to say that those particular individuals, if you're a racist, or if you're a sexist, if you're a homophobe, you should be refused from the NHS altogether. So I think both no, of those extremes we have to are absurd. We have to distinguish between. I mean, you're right. Misogyny itself. We look at male violence against women and girls. Mm -hmm. One to two women killed by a current or former partner every week. Uh, you know, 85 to 90,000 women raped a year, 400,000 sexually assaulted. The way men speak about women is linked. It's the way men speak about women is part of that continuum. And that's why I'm saying it's different from racism or misogyny or indeed homophobia from just abuse. Abuse is being rude to people to an extreme. I but wonder whether other than being staff should be able to put up with that, should have to put up with We're that. not saying that, but you have so, to treat them separately. Thank you very much for your call. Heather from Gwynedd, what's your view on this? Right. Um, hello, everybody. I'll give you a perspective from my daughter. My daughter is a registered nurse. Mm -hmm. And that's a registered nurse and an old registered nurse. They, their oath is to do no harm, so they will treat anybody. And the, my daughter, in particular, has treated people who have uh, racially abused her. She's white, but we're Welsh. But we, we have been racially abused because of our language. Also, she's now a manager of a nursing care um, home, and she has a lot of people who are brown, black, uh, Asian that really work hard in the, in that establishment, and they get totally abused by racial remarks Terrible. and the way that they are treated by 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 the patients, by the service users. And I so, suppose what... she will not accept it. She will not accept it. She won't refuse treatment but she will take them upon it because they they have capacity so they have capacity to listen and to say if you refuse any treatment yourself because of your abusement then um so be it then we won't treat you so you okay. know it usually comes to it comes to the end that they want to be treated so they will apologize so uh, it, what's interesting here is actually we're speaking this uh, speaking about this from a perspective of sort of outside looking in but actually maybe if you're a doctor or a nurse you see this debate in a very different light having taken the hippocratic oath and 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 doing the job for the reasons that you do heather thank you very much for your call uh, thank you for all your calls on this we're actually